I don't think it would be an outlandish statement for me to say that Disney's live-action remakes haven't been the best. From a mediocre Jungle Book to a terrible Lion King, can't forget the Will Smith Aladdin, yeah. Disney's live-action remakes have felt, well, soulless, taking their timeless classic movies and just putting them into quote-unquote live-action, offering no distinct visual distinction or change or something to modernize it in any way, which on one hand may be looked at as faithful, on the other hand, I look at it as lazy and uninspired. I think the 2019 Lion King is the best example of this. There is literally almost nothing different about this movie from the previous one. All of the changes that are made make the movie worse. Characters can't emote because they look like lions. The whole, hey, let's take our timeless classic movies and turn them into quote-unquote live action has proven to be successful for them financially, and I know why they're doing it. But should they do it? No. And guess what? They're not done. There's the Little Mermaid remake coming out, there's a Hercules remake coming out, there's a Snow White remake coming out, but just recently, we got a brand new one that released straight on Disney+. Plus. That being the 2022 live-action Pinocchio, directed by Robert Zemeckis. Now, Robert Zemeckis is a G. He's made some absolutely amazing classic movies, such as the Back to the Future trilogy, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Forrest Gump, Castaway, etc. But around the turn of the century, he's been been missing. Outside of Real Steel, that movie is a classic. So when I heard that he was doing a live action Pinocchio starring Tom Hanks, I was like, hey, maybe, maybe Zarba Zemeckis can do a good thing, you know? Oh boy, was I wrong. Well, Disney's Pinocchio might not be the worst live action remake they've ever done. It's going to be hard for Lion King to give up that title. This is still very embarrassing and very bad. I just want to remind everybody that this is Pinocchio. And yes, we've received a lot of Pinocchio movies in the course of cinematic history, but there's something different about Disney's Pinocchio. This is their second movie they ever made back in 1940. When you think of a Disney classic, this is in the name. I thought it would be of interest to Disney to preserve the name brand of these films, the building blocks of your company. Maybe just leave them where they deserve to be. Don't tinker with them. Don't try to make a quick buck off of them in this kind of way. You can do other stuff with them that is faithful and still interesting and well made. But hey, Disney decided, let's make a live action remake of our second movie that we ever made, Pinocchio. How did this come to be and what is the film actually like? Let's take a look. During the production of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, Norman Ferguson, who was an animator at Disney, showed Walt Disney himself a translated version of Carlo Collodi's 1883 Italian children's novel, The Adventures of Pinocchio. Walt was reportedly busting his guts with enthusiasm, which would lead to Disney moving ahead with a film about Pinocchio. Pinocchio, I'm sure we all know the story. An Italian woodcarver named Geppetto carves a wooden puppet named Pinocchio who is brought to life by a blue fairy, who informs him that he can be become a real boy if he proves himself to be brave, truthful, and unselfish. However, when he goes against this and not being truthful, his nose grows. Pinocchio is a classic tale, one of Disney's best movies in my opinion, I actually love the film. It gets surprisingly dark at points, it takes itself seriously, it's not dumbed down for children. It's a timeless masterpiece, and it's not like I never expected for this to be touched again by Disney, but the way they did so, they just went about it the wrong way. In the mid-2010s, specifically 2015, Disney was gung-ho on getting a live-action Pinocchio out in theaters. The film's development was disrupted by a bunch of director and writer turnover, with Sam Mendes originally in talks to direct the film, but stepped down around 2017. Then they were looking at Paul King, who actually I thought would make a great choice with his work on the Paddington movies, but King left the film for family reasons, quote-unquote, only to lead for the aforementioned Robert Zemeckis in the director's chair. It was steady development from there, and Pinocchio would eventually release on September 8th, 2022. Hey, that's pretty close to today. So what do I think of Disney's live action Pinocchio? Well, I think I already said, I think it sucked, but why does it suck? Why did this film fall flat on its face? Let's take a look at Disney's 2022 Pinocchio. The film opens up with Jiminy Cricket, played by Joseph Gordon-Levitt, but this time with the modern day edition of Cynicism. Never understood that expression. How can you be once upon a time? Way to suck the magic out of your own shit, Disney. He then finds Geppetto's place, where he goes inside and is that a CGI cat? Geppetto is working on Pinocchio. And as we see, Geppetto is played by none other than Tom Hanks. I think it goes without saying that Tom Hanks is not only a Disney legend, but one of the greatest actors of all time. It was an interesting choice to get him for this role, but he is getting kind of up there, but it kind of just feels like he's playing the same character he did in Elvis, just slightly nicer and more sane. 
screen. Jiminy continues to watch, and I'm sorry I have to point this out. Why does his face look like that? It looks like he's wearing a mask. Is he wearing the skin of another cricket? Whoa, yeah. excuse me, man. Thank you, Mr. Zemeckis, for that, and the office looking at the camera joke. Now, if you watched the original Pinocchio, you know that Geppetto had a lot of clocks. Nothing crazy about them, they were just very intricate looking clocks, but this time around in 2022, we have Disney-themed clocks. That's right. Self-servicing product placement, everybody. Let's get, let's get a pat on the back for Disney. Geppetto then heads to bed, and the scene just lacks all of the visual and creative style of the original. Figaro doesn't sleep in a traditional bed like a normal human. He doesn't open in the window for Geppetto. The cinematography and the colors overall look kind of flat. He then wishes for Pinocchio to become a real boy, but he never says it. It's like Disney expects you to know what Geppetto wished for, but if that's the case, that means that we had to watch the original. So what's the point of this movie? He doesn't even tell Figaro. I'm sorry I'm complaining about this movie so much off the bat, but it's just doing so much wrong in the first few minutes. A beam of light then strikes Pinocchio, giving him life. Now, I'm sorry, but we're gonna have to spend a little bit of time on this. The, scene. the blue fairy does eventually come, but I don't understand the decision of having him become conscious before she does. The whole blue beam is so unnecessary in my opinion. Now I feel like it'd be a bit ignorant for me to leave out the entire controversy that surrounded basically this movie. A lot of quote unquote Disney fans were upset that the blue fairy was a black lady this time around. Now, I'm sure most people watching this know that's ridiculous. This is a fairy tale. This is a literal fairy. I think the race is pretty irrelevant. The skin color of the character was never integral to the character in the original. I genuinely don't see the issue here. I think a lot of the quote-unquote outrage came from bigoted alt-right skewing hate bait channels, and I think most sane human beings aren't upset that they made the blue fairy black. I, I think Cynthia or Revo, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, does a great job in the role. Jiminy Cricket becomes Pinocchio's conscious and he gets a brand new fit. Tom Hanks wakes up to see that Pinocchio is alive, and this is the perfect place to shoehorn in some Disney product placement. One of the problems with this movie being live action is it doesn't actually look like Tom Hanks is holding Pinocchio. This is an exclusive here, this is an issue with pretty much every film when a human interacts with a CGI object or character. Just more reason why this movie never needed to happen. Maybe it is time for you to go to school. Yeah, maybe give this get a bed first. Pinocchio then heads to school. Honest John spots Pinocchio and sees an opportunity. He purposely runs into Pinocchio, promising him fame. An influencer! At this point, I should just really turn this movie off. <gasps> I've got it. Chris Pine! You know, my favorite thing about the movie is like it feels like a like a movie. With the help of Jiminy Cricket, he eventually does head to school. That's right, he actually does go to school in this version, unlike the original where he never goes there. But he's eventually kicked out because he's not a real boy. But every theater kid ever returns to encourage Pinocchio to join the theater. Not brilliant artists like yourself! It's fame you want! This man is so extra. Geppetto notices that Pinocchio is not home on time and sets out to go look for him. But while he's doing that, Pinocchio is about to perform. We're introduced to a new character named Sabina and her puppet and yes these are new characters in like the entirety of Pinocchio these characters weren't in the original and I'm sorry but they feel incredibly shoehorned into this movie they pop up in a handful of scenes just to check in on Pinocchio and say hi they contribute literally absolutely nothing to the plot whatsoever the story would be absolutely no different if they were not in the movie I'm all for my boy Pinocchio getting some pup pussy but this is not what I mean he performs the classic got no strings on me song and it's still a banger <laughs> <laughs> Pinocchio was shoved in a cage by this fat goof. And then there's the cutting in of the aforementioned girl puppet, who, like I said, really doesn't add anything to the scene as Jiminy Kirk comes along and saves the day. The scene is kind of like the original, except the Blue Fairy doesn't return to help out Pinocchio and Jiminy Cricket. In fact, the only time the Blue Fairy shows up in the entire movie was the scene that we already talked about. So I'm sure all the bitching and complaining online was worth it, guys, right? This is the first time we see when Pinocchio lies that his nose grows. So in this version of the movie, this is how they get the key to set themselves free. The scene of Pinocchio being trapped is needlessly elongated and just kind of hurt the film's pacing even more. But hey, at least the scene's over. <laughs>
<sighs> they get caught up with these absolute hooligans on their way to Pleasure Island. And speaking of Pleasure Island, they kind of ruin it in this movie. A lot of the edge and more serious aspects are taken away from it, such as exchanging actual beer for root beer, which completely negates the purpose of it. Root beer is completely legal, guys! But if I can't give this scene one thing, it is the most well shot and visually interesting scene of the movie, even though I want to absolutely punch all these kids in the face. Oh, they ruined the pool scene too, he's not smoking a cigar! We then get the donkey scene, and I know a lot of people might not agree with me on this, but I think it's actually kind of well done here. It's supposed to be scary, and yes, while adults might not be scared by this, I think a kid would find this pretty scary. I think the designs of the monsters are cool, but it does a pretty good job here. Candlewick then starts turning into a donkey, R.E.P. Candlewick, never liked you, I'm sorry. Pinocchio and Jiminy Cricket gotta escape, and I'm sorry, but this is not positive thinking, Pinocchio. Positive thinking, Jiminy! Pinocchio, if you were a real boy, you'd be dead! Pinocchio then finds out that Tom Hanks went looking for him and sold all of his clocks to buy himself a boat. The girl puppet shows up needlessly again. Perhaps I'll see you next year? When we come back to put on a show in Siena? Don't set up a sequel, y'all ain't getting one. They eventually find Tom Hanks and we get the water scene. But instead of just having him being a whale, they turn him into some giant water monster. <laughs> Okay, I'm not gonna lie, that got me. I've been seeing a lot of people complain about this action climax at the end of the movie, and honestly, I don't see an issue with it. The original had this as well, and I don't see people complaining about it that way, it's just a more modernized, updated version of it. Is it a bit excessive? Absolutely, but so was the original too, it's a cartoon. It's just kinda weird, I guess, seeing it in live action. Pinocchio's tear brings Tom Hanks back to life. He tells Pinocchio that he is a real boy to him. They say they love each other, we get a happy little ending, and then- OH MY GOD! Now was Pinocchio 2022. Like I said, this movie was not amazing whatsoever. This is not the worst of Disney's live action remakes, far from it I'd say, but it still is not a great film and just proves the point that Disney live action remakes are just working against themselves. They are simply pointless. These did not need to exist. So much of the charm and style and purpose of these movies are stripped away for modern audiences or to simply differentiate itself in some way, and I can't name a single change made in Pinocchio 2022 that is better than the original from 1940. I'm not gonna act like I'm a Pinocchio stan that I've been loving this character all my life, but it's really hard to watch Disney just turning their characters, their icons, into this. It's not like they're defiling their grave or butchering them with a the knife, that's not the case. There could be worse adaptations of this character, it is very faithful, but once again, it's a pointless, soulless remake that simply was made for money, Disney Plus subscribers, and did not need to exist. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, this is not the end, there are plenty more remakes that are coming very soon, such as The Little Mermaid, Snow White's getting another remake, there's nothing we can really do to make these stop. But what we can do is simply ask, please Disney, when you do these remakes that at this point are inevitable, do something different do something creative, do something ambitious. Push the boundaries of what these characters can be. Still be faithful, still be respectful, but do something that makes the movie worthwhile. Despite some negative videos on their films and their company, I do love Disney. I love watching their films, I love going to the parks, I love so much about Disney as a company. I just want to see them do better, because the original movies that these films are based off of show that they can.